Hi, my name is Carla Campos, and I'm the founder at Social Tech Live. Today, we're here with Josh Hirsch, the managing, the marketing manager at Nonprofits First, and he's going to be one of the speakers at Social Tech Live. And hey, Josh, how are you? Hello. Nice to see you all out there today. Nice to see Josh and his awesome Homer photo that he put together. We were just talking about it before we went live. <laughs> That was three days of hard work, but now I have a masterpiece hanging up in my office. I love creative people. They make my day. If you know, the world would be boring if there weren't more creative people like us out there. And you're super creative. I was just you were showing me some of the 360 uh, video photos that you were taking at the Windward Walls on your Twitter. Yeah. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, I got first involved in this world of VR and, and 360 when this summer I discovered an app that Google had called Street View. And originally you took your iPhone and you snapped 33 different dots and you had to move and snap, move and snap. And what it did was create this 360 degree uh, photosphere. Now the technology has advanced and there are now specific cameras that you can use to do just the same thing. And the cameras really aren't that cost prohibitive, at least for the entry level. Uh, the one that I use most is called the Ricoh Theta S. It's $350. And what's really unique about it, it has 280 degree lenses on either side. And literally between the time you snap a photo and process it, about 90 seconds later, you have your immersive image ready to go. So what I like to do is find uh, unique venues that I'm able to, whenever I'm out traveling or out speaking at various events, how can I tell the story of where I am and bring someone into my eyes? Because it's one thing to show a picture, it's one thing for someone to see a video, but if you see it from my perspective and, and understand what I'm going through at that time, they're able to explore it and become part of the action in a much different way. So in the world of nonprofits where I've been most of my career, if not my entire career pretty much, I like to see how can I tell a organization's story and affect a donor? How can I affect the end result client? How can I make someone understand what it means to be part of the action and, and, and see it from that perspective? And what VR photography and that immersive communication experience does, it allows you to become part of the action. And we were just talking about it, I believe, in another Google Hangout with a couple of people. How I believe it was with David Rahano because he's doing not a, not a similar talk, but he's touching on some of the VR and cool technology out there and how it kind of makes you stand out against other people who are also trying to get their content noticed. Can you tell us um, how you've been using some of this technology in your um, job as the marketing manager? Um, sure. One really simple thing thing is that we like to do is go into our various organizations that we work with and create a virtual tour. So it doesn't have to be your traditional uh, photo or video. It can be this new 360 degree photosphere image where you put it on a tripod or you hold it on a selfie stick or even hold it in your hand. And I'm going to use some great examples of how you can use donors to engage with that uh, later at my talk at Social Tech Live. But within the span of 15 minutes, you're now able to bring someone from halfway across the world into your organization. So a great example I like to use is you work for a children's hospital, and you've just got this brand new pediatric cancer wing that you're ready to uh, unveil, but you have that last major donor that you want to bring in and help secure the gift. Well, that major donor is 90 years old. He's been supporting your organization for 30 years now. He lives out of state, and unfortunately, he can't travel anymore. But using this technology, you're able to bring that donor into that pediatric cancer ward and have them see what it's like and what their dollars are going to do, and more importantly, how they're going to impact their children and all those families that are going to be benefiting from the services and through their donation. So it's really simple technology. Obviously, there's some high-end organizations that are spending millions and millions of dollars to produce great quality, but really anyone at home can do it with a you know simple camera or even their iPhone. And do you have that some of the mother like with you or bringing it to the conference to kind of like I pretty much don't ever have that camera out of my pocket. It is with me at all times because you never know when the moment's gonna strike you that you just want to capture it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I love that. So is it in your pocket right now? <laughs> I, I have it in my backpack, but yes I do have it with me. 
Would you show it to us? All right, I'll grab it. Let me grab it for you. Um, but it's nice because it is so small, it's so compact that you don't need to carry around big rig. I just have my little handy tote bag of all my electronics, and this is it. This is the Rico Theta S. Simple, fits in the palm of my hand. It has 280 degree lenses on either side. It fits nicely onto your tripod, and you're ready to go. Uh, it links, it creates a Wi-Fi network directly to your phone, so your phone then allows you to take the picture. So I can step out of frame and snap my picture. Oh, wow. And it's so small, I would picture it to be much bigger than that. Exactly. There's all different kinds of rigs uh, that you, know, you can put together, and it really depends on how much post-production you want to do. But this does it all. Literally, in the span of 90 seconds from the time I take the picture, it does all the post-production. I can upload it onto the Rico Theta's website, share that out on Twitter, upload it to Google Maps, and that way when someone searches for that specific location, you're now showing up on Google Maps. Uh, my photospheres have over 700,000 views on Google Maps, and it's a great way for a small business or a large organization to make themselves even more uh, recognizably found on the internet. Wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> And I saw that you've been um, at other conferences also presenting on VR and different things. Can you tell us more about those presentations and what you've been doing in the community? Sure. So my background is specifically in nonprofit digital communications. Uh, I kind of fell into this world back in the early 2000s when Facebook was just starting out. And I knew that I was at a small nonprofit. It was a, a small public charter school. We had no budget for marketing but I had to somehow use this new thing called social media and, and Facebook to best get our story out there. And it was through creating engaging dialogue. It was through, you know, at the time, it was what we were actually still saying, Josh Hirsch is doing this. You know, we were talking in third person and we didn't really even have pages set up yet. So how can we learn the technology to best uh, benefit the nonprofits where I was working with? You know, fast forward 10 years, and we can't imagine a world without social media. You know, here in Palm Beach County, we have over 6,000 nonprofits. So how am I going to make my organization stand out? Well, I know I don't have a million dollars that I can put into a marketing budget, so using free tools, you know, free being the word, obviously it's my time, and, you know, being able to find what stories and what content will work and, and share best with people, but utilizing technology to take that forward. So I've really been able to get out there and share this information. I speak all over the country uh, at international conferences, specifically on social media and digital communications for nonprofits. I presented the VR uh, workshop that I'll be doing at Social Tech Live. I did a mini session of that uh, this past March in Boston at the Association of Fundraising Professionals International Conference and just presented it this past June, uh, excuse me, this past May uh, at Planet Philanthropy in Orlando. So it's a very much cutting edge sort of uh, workshop and technology. You know, we see that there's a lot of organizations out there uh, that are using it, uh, but how are we going to best use it to tell our story? Sorry, I had to mute myself. Can you hear me? Now I can hear you. There's construction going on next door, so <laughs> it's like you just hear hammers. I have to mute myself. <laughs> so in the nonprofit world, there's a lot of let's see. I guess I don't want to say old school ways of doing it, but I mean with the digital world and it's kind of gotten more competitive. What are your thoughts on kind of like the way nonprofit marketing was done prior to social media and how it is now? Sure. So I. I'm a big believer on I'm going to print something up and six weeks later that's outdated. So why am I going to invest hundreds of dollars in design, hundreds of dollars in printing and mailing and postage, and then have a stack of flyers that are sitting around that are already outdated? So how can we use the technology that's out here between you know, simple graphic design? And you don't have to be uh, a graphic design wizard. You know, there's great free platforms out there, and I always preach Canva. Canva, I think, is one of the greatest tools out there, specifically for nonprofits, because Canva has a whole nonprofit division where you can apply and get access to pre-made templates based upon your PMS color palette, specific fonts, specific images. That way, you have a branded look, and that's what's really important, 
is because you're trying to cut through the masses and you've got these other 6,000 nonprofits here in Palm Beach County that are trying to talk about all the amazing things they're doing, but how am I gonna stand out? And we know it's gonna be through visuals because the human attention span is that of only 8.25 seconds. Now, that might not seem like a lot, but fast forward, or go back 15 years ago, and the human attention span was 12 seconds. So why is that cut down? Well, it's social media. It's our need to always be connected. It's having in our hand at all times the window to the universe. Any question we could ever want answered is available to us through a smartphone. So we're not able to focus. We're always going left and right. There's only so many things going in this multimedia world that we live in. So how can I cut through and using visuals, like I said, through Canva, and there's other good platforms out there. Um, obviously, Canva is a web-based platform. When I'm out uh, on the go and I need to create something, I like using a, uh, what used to be called Adobe Post. Now it's Adobe Spark Post. And I'm able to create a branded image that is set based upon a social media template's uh, preferred uh, image dimensions. And it's all easily done through my smartphone. So I can sit there, snap my picture, tell my story, get it out there, and within two minutes, I'm able to have everyone know about what's happening where I am with the organization. And how long have you been in the nonprofit? Uh, I guess about 10 years now. I finished my undergrad and then my master's in 2005 from the University of Florida. Go Gators. <laughs> And uh, I've, I've always been in this. I, I was first on the front lines of working with, uh, with children in a uh, community center running their aftercare program in their summer camp, and then transitioned more into a management role. And for the past eight years, I've been in the uh, educational philanthropy communications world. And happy to say, back in uh, earlier this year, I officially retired as a fundraiser, and now I'm strictly doing digital communications for nonprofits. And how did you get into the field? I kind of fell into it. Uh, you know, I, I knew that it was up and coming. I went and originally interviewed for a programmer's position with a nonprofit and was uh, offered a development position. I didn't really know too much about fundraising at the time, but, uh, you know, I, I took to it and, and I, I felt that, you know, the executive director at the time saw it in me and that's led to a great career. And I was always, you know, in a small nonprofit having to wear both hats of communications as well as uh, the fundraiser. And I know that your left hand has to talk to your right hand. And if you don't know what your development department is saying because your marketing department isn't giving them the right content, well, you're going to have a lot of disjointed information coming out about your organization. So while it's you know been crazy having to do both things at once, it's really given me the opportunity to teach myself so many different tools, teach myself graphic design, and teach myself you know basic web uh, coding and and all these things to how can I get my story out there as best using as many free or low cost tools as possible. Um, and I just love it, you know, it gives me opportunity to sit here with you today and talk about how can you tell your organization's story through immersive communication experiences with 360 degree photos and video. And what are some of the nonprofits that you're working with currently? Uh, so here in Palm Beach County, we have uh, at Nonprofits First, we accredit over 80 organizations. We have close to 50 different member organizations ranging from your small no mom and pop nonprofits with a budget of under $100,000 to your major boys and girls club, $10 million plus nonprofits here in Palm Beach County uh, that make a major difference. But both of them and, and all of our organizations have very specific needs. And at Nonprofits First, we're able to help meet those needs for the various programs and services we offer as a management support organization for nonprofits. And what are some of your favorite nonprofits to work with and why? <laughs> oh, so I, I guess it's, you know, personally, um, education has always been a big thing for me. You know, I really believe that the greatest gift you can give a child is access to quality education. So pretty much any of your, you know, your schools that I've had a chance to work with, I think are incredible. I think uh, I sit on the board for our local association of fundraising professionals. I'm our a current communications chair and beginning in January, I'll be the president elect of our chapter. And we have 150 members who represent, you know, hundreds of different uh, nonprofits here in Palm Beach County. And each one of them are so unique. I love Habitat for Humanity. I think there's something special about not only you as a volunteer going in and helping build someone's house, but building it alongside with them as they put in the sweat equity for what's going to be their future home. And virtual reality is a great way uh, that you can tell the story of that future homeowner 
through a Habitat for Humanity. You know, you show what is a future home site going to look like, so you're able to connect with those donors who say, you know what, I want to support Mrs. Jones from getting into her, her first home that she'll be able to own. And sorry, sorry, because I have to keep on muting because of the current charging. <laughs> So um, anyone who kind of wants to do the same effect could use that small camera you showed us earlier, right? Absolutely. You know, you could use, you know, your, your Ricoh Theta S or you could use your iPhone. I mean, there's really simple apps out there to create this immersive communication experience. It just depends on how in-depth you want to go and how, um, you know, high-tech, I guess, is the best word uh, to show your stories. But simple, free apps, free content. Uh, devices that will allow you to tell your story. And uh, this is what your presentation is going to include at Social Tech Lab? Or are you going to be sharing some of these technologies with? I'm going to be sharing some technology. I'm going to be sharing some uh, of the you know lower end stuff that I've shot, but more of the organizations that are investing millions of dollars to really get out there. And these are like the major nonprofit players out there in the world uh, that incredible videos that you just sit back and you're like, wow. I never thought about it like that. And now that I'm able to, to see it from their perspective, and not just through their eyes, but from what everything happening around them at once, I think you know, you're going to walk away and, and have a whole new outlook on how can you become a better storyteller. Because yeah, I was looking at your uh, pictures from the other day at the Windward Walls, and I'm like, kind of like, I was there physically and kind of comparing, hey, yeah, look, this is how it looks. And it, it was like really cool. Like, you know, it was something really exciting that I don't really usually see on a Twitter feed, so I definitely caught my attention. Wonderful. I'm glad you liked it. Do you get that kind of feedback from other Twitter users about your content? Absolutely. You know, it, it's I'm kind of like in a, a competition, if you will. A, a good friend of mine who I introduced to this uh, content uh, is called Jim Anderson. He's a consultant, and he and I kind of built this uh, presentation, this VR workshop that uh, he'll present it at various workshops. He lives in Arizona, so we presented together in Orlando, and he presents at, at various conferences where I'm not able to attend. So we had just finished up at the conference in Boston, and he sends out a tweet saying, the first photosphere taken from inside the cockpit of an airplane. I'm like, well, that's a challenge. So I knew later that day when I landed in Charlotte, I had to go up to the, the sort of, you know, I said, you know, this is my Rico Theta S, and this is what it does, and I showed her a sample that I shot from earlier that week at Fenway in a really cool uh, photo in Boston. And I'm like, you know, do you think the captain will let me into the cockpit? Well, I got to go ahead and I was able to, you know, so six hours later after he shot out the, the first photosphere inside of a cockpit, I was able to get into a cockpit of an airplane and, and do my own. So it's, it's, you know, we're always pushing each other to really see the limits. And he is blown it away. He's over, I think, 1.8 million uh, views of his photospheres on Google Maps now. Um, and he's incredible. He is one of the best uh, storytellers that I have known and he does a great job of really curating his life through photos and video and now through 360 degree immersive images so uh, I really owe it to him to where I am today as a storyteller in this world and do you feel that some people maybe don't understand the importance of storytelling in the digital world and it's something that you kind of want to promote out there that storytelling is important Absolutely. It's not just about having great content, but why are you going to bring me in? You know, what is it about your organization, your cause, your hook? What is it that I'm going to care about? For me, you know, it's wonderful. You've just saved a village of 10,000 people and you've put in a new well and all their, you know, these families are going to have fresh water. But tell me about the story of Salem. Tell me the story of that one 14-year-old girl and what she has to go through on a daily basis to get water for her family, so then she can go to school and take care of, her, care of her family as the mother figure because there is no mother around. Well, using technology like this uh, 360 degree photos and videos, you're able to get a whole new experience on what it is like to experience Salem's daily life. So this is one of the examples that I'll be sharing at the uh, conference. It's a incredible piece done by Charity Water. And if you're not familiar with Charity Water, they are hands down the greatest when it comes to social media for nonprofits and their cause. Uh, they basically build wells in you know third world old countries and bring water to where there wasn't fresh water before. And they use social media as their way to do it. It was a company that was uh, basically founded by millennials that saw uh, a need and uh, created a way to help solve that problem.
And um, also when it comes to like nonprofits, I see a lot of them like on Kickstarter or in the Google, how can this VR technology and help them get funded? Because I mean, it's not donation wise, but it's funding wise. So, so that's a great, great example. So there was a, um, a video called Clouds Over, um, um, blanking on the name at the moment. It's uh, Clouds Over Sidra. That's what it's called, Clouds Over Sidra. It's a great video that I believe was shot by UNICEF, I think, did this one particularly. And it was shown at a fundraiser uh, in Kuwait. And I believe in the one night alone, they raised over a billion dollars. That's with a B. Uh, because of this immersive video that they were able to show, and I'll be uh, showing that as an example as well as at the conference. Um, there's, a, there's a great photo of Ban Ki-moon, who's the uh, General Secretary of the UN, with the, the VR goggles on. And, you know, it's one thing to tell about what's happening in Syria and in the plight of all these refugees, but it's another to be in there and actually see what's happening. So it's really, really powerful stuff that can translate into fundraising as well. We actually did an event with um, third wave volunteers who do, um, they provide lights for the refugees coming in from Syria and Greece. So we had a whole event for that. So, I mean, they're, they're going to be at Social Tech Lab. I believe they're speaking on their own use of social media, but um, it's going to be great for you guys to connect because I don't think I've seen them do VR. So, you know, just, it might be a great. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Great. And, um, what do nonprofits when you go present like what what do they like come to you and say afterwards when you're done telling them about this VR and 360 and all that? They don't realize how um, easy it really can be to tell their story on a new level. You know, we're so as you said stuck in our ways with tra the traditional way of telling a story and, and the arc of that story, but now you're able to bring me into that story and make me experience empathy. And that's where you're going to drive interest. That's where you're going to drive awareness. And that's how you're going to drive action. Do you have people coming after and like getting the equipment and saying, look, Josh, on social media, look what I did um, 360 wise or VR? Absolutely. I was actually, when I was down in uh, the Wynwood the, uh, district the other day and I was showing to my waitress, you know, check out this camera. I'm like, yeah, you probably have seen a bunch of pictures, you know, everyone's shooting the walls, but have you seen a picture like this? And she's like, no. And was like blown away by it. I'm like, yep. Yeah. Simple little camera fits in the palm of your hand, $350. She's like, I know what I want for my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I, I won her over that easily. But it's the truth. You know, from a, from a business perspective, you don't realize that, okay, here's another way to put myself on the map, make myself stand out from other businesses. And it's through simple technology that you're able to do that. So it's not always from a nonprofit perspective, how am I going to tell my story? But from a for-profit profit perspective, what's going to make my business stand out from someone else? And I mean, this is a very silly question, but I just feel like it needs to be stated in words. So I'm just going to tell you. So why do you think people need to stand out? I know it's, it's a silly question, but I want to hear it from you. <laughs> why do you think people need to stand out in social media? Do we want to be among the masses or do we want to be the leader of the pack? And I think that um, me personally, I want to stand out. I want to have my story above everyone else. I want to have what I care about and what I'm passionate rise to the top. So I'm going to find the best way through free or low cost tools that are going to allow me to do that. In social media, there is no better way to do that. Now, I really believe that Facebook, yes, it's the biggest platform and we've got billions of people on there, you know, but because of their algorithm, you're actually going to have an organic reach of, I think it's now 2.7%, which is next to nothing. But you go to a platform like Twitter or you go to a platform like Instagram and using a branded hashtag, you really have a much larger soapbox that you can get on and truly be looked at as an influencer, being as an expert in your area that you want to talk about. So with that branded hashtag, I'm able to create a new conversation or using targeted hashtags, find a conversation that I want to become uh, you know, an expert in and, and speak. And then not just talk to be heard, but talk because I have something to say and talk because I have quality content to add to the conversation. And you shot me a message about a Twitter chat that you're going to be a co-host. Can you tell us more about that? Sure. On July 12th, I'll be a special guest uh, for the hashtag grant chat, which we'll be talking about specifically VR storytelling for nonprofits. And it's a great segue and plug for the conference since it'll be a week later. So you can tune in at noon on Tuesday, July 12th. 
and I believe it's Tuesday, and uh, you know, be part of the conversation. And what is Grant Chat so that the people who maybe need it can join more? Sure, Grant Chat is a uh, professional conversation of those in the fundraising world, obviously geared, you know, specifically to grant uh, writers and grant researchers, but. There's all various topics, whether it's millennials, fundraising, communications. They really tackle everything that you can imagine. I believe their website is grantchat.org, uh, but you might want to Google that to be sure. And I mean, you're awesome. You seem like really knowledgeable in nonprofits and everything you do. So I'm extremely happy that you're going to be at Social Tech Live sharing all your knowledge. So thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. I, I look forward to it. And uh, be sure to check me out online at Josh Hirsch one on Twitter. And I look forward to seeing everybody at Social Tech Live.